Hey everybody, and welcome to another learning statistics with Jamovi video. Ooh, it's been a little bit of a, long, a little bit of a while. Uh, apologies for that. If you're watching this not in real time, well, you'd miss nothing. <laughs> so in this video, I want to continue our learning using a great uh, sort of analog. It's the SPSS guide for research methods, and we are moving through the book using this guide to help us with Jamovi. Now. One of the, uh, and I've, I've got a clean install of Jamovi here. Um, it just got updated last week to 2.3.3. And the only modules that I have are the scatter and, um, well, let's go to the Jamovi library, actually. Some of these do need to be updated. Actually, everyone needs to be updated, which is why it's a clean, which is why it's fairly clean. One of the things, though, that I suggest you grab for our uh, video today, if you want to follow along as I go through, this is still is yet to be put in alphabetical order. But this is the one that I think you should get because this is uh, what we are um, using. This data set is what we are, or a set of data sets uh, for this learning statistics with Jamovi program that I'm putting together, these, this collection of videos. And so um, that's where the data is that we are going to use in this video series. Now, there are already several videos for the series, but it's been a little while since I've mentioned anything about what we are doing and how we are using uh, existing materials to teach Jamovi. Okay, to to teach you skills that don't rely on SPSS. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like SPSS. Uh, it's just expensive. And if you are in between learning uh, SPSS or learning R, Jamovi and Jasp are right in the middle here. And honestly, a great place to be. A great place to be. Okay, so let's do today's video. In this video, we are going to talk about internal reliability. Now, internal reliability is, an, is a reliability that is meant to assess how consistent someone is with their own responses. You usually use internal reliability for scale items, so I, uh, or, or scales or questionnaires. I, a collection of items that are related to one another, and you're gonna see whether or not those items work well with each other. Now, there are different kinds of validity and reliability analyses that will help you construct really good scales for a construct, a psychological construct. But internal consistency and internal reliability are very useful metrics to get started with your reliability and validity analyses. So to get us started, I want to go ahead and open up the hamburger menu here to open. And I'm already in the data library, but if you go up to the data library, again, like I said, I have a clean install. Well, my modules need to be updated, so it's clean to me. Uh, but learning statistics with Jamovi is just uh, a module that installs a folder in the Jamovi uh, library. Okay, so it's just a set of uh, CSV files. So it's very quick, very easy, doesn't really need to be updated. And the lovely, lovely folks that created it also gave these color coded categorizations. So you can really quickly choose a, a data set, uh, a file that speaks to what exactly you want to be doing. So down here at the very bottom is a personality questionnaire, personalities data sample three. Again, this is in chapter 15 of their book, but I, of course, am using a different book. Okay, again, trying to match the kinds of stuff, the SPSS tutorial guide by Georgiana uh, Wilson Donges. Uh, uh, I apologize for messing up the last name, Georgiana. Um, it's my bad there. I have not heard it spoken out loud. Okay, so let's jump into this personality questionnaire. It's going to open up a the file for us. And as I mentioned to you previously, this is a set of just data from a big five personality inventory. And uh, so what you, how do I know that it's big five is because we have A and five items for A standing for agreeableness, C, five items for C standing for conscientiousness, E, five items for E standing for extroversion, N, five items for N standing for neuroticism, and O, five items for O standing for openness. We also have their age and their gender, although we are not going to be using that for this particular analysis. Okay, so how you do internal reliability analysis in Jamovi. All right, so you go up to factor, okay, and we have scale analysis here. But obviously, we're going to, um, this is different from the three data reduction uh, analyses, which are principal component, exploratory factor analysis, or con confirmatory factor analysis. We all just want to do reliability analysis. So we're going to click on that, and it's going to open up the reliability analysis for us. I'm going to slide this over so we can see all of it. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to grab all of the items through uh, A1 to O5, and then we're going to plop them into the items list. And it's going to tell us that we don't have a very good Cronbach's alpha, which is the standard for, this is the standard for reliability internal consistency analysis. Okay. So this is telling us that uh, our scale is not very good. It's about half the time people are making the same judgment 
on items. But of course, we see note items A1, C4, C5, E1, E2, N1, N2, N3, N4, N5. Okay, well, the entire N scale, the entire neuroticism subscale, O2, O4, and O5 correlate negatively with the total scale and probably should be reversed. So we'll come back to that one. But that's a very interesting set of information, okay? So like I said, Cronbach's alpha is telling us the correlation between items. Correlation between items, okay? So 0.54 is halfway between, is about halfway between zero and one. Now, if that's what appearances are, that wouldn't be too bad. 0.5 is a pretty large effect. But for complex alpha, that's not good. We actually want this to be in the plus, uh, in the 0 0.80 plus range. So we want this to be above 0 0.80. Now, Cronbach has said that, uh, and other researchers have said that, that is a good metric for a reliable set of items, internally consistent items. So we, we need to get this higher. Now, one of the things we're going to do is figure out how to do the reversion, or the reversing of this. Okay. Before we do that, I want to go ahead and grab some of these uh, options to beef up our output. So let's go ahead and get the mean and the standard deviation for the scale. So the mean, I don't know why they didn't capitalize this SD or put a capital mean. Um, we, we, can, we can surely do that, Jamovi. We can surely make, I mean, we capitalized Cronbach, this guy's name, so that's important. Uh, but the main mean of the scale as it stands, just these items like this, 3.77, so just above the midpoint of the scale, and then about the 0 0.41 standard deviation. Uh, so anywhere between, you know, just above three and just above four. Now, item statistics. This is a really good one. So if we were to drop some items, what would Kronbach Alpha be? And you can see here that if we were to drop any of these items, including some of the ones that are listed in this note here, that we really don't get an advanced, uh, we don't really get a Cronbox Alpha that is stronger, okay? Um, I don't see anything, I guess if we dropped E1, we would get 0.579, that looks like some of the strongest ones, but even if we drop, dropped all of the ends, it would still be around 50%, look at that, this is, this is not, so the reliability items, the item table, is really nice if we wanted to see what happens when Maybe some item is in there that shouldn't be in there, okay? So let me give you an example. If I accidentally put in age here, of course, we get a significantly lower Cronbach's alpha, right? 0.157. But that's because age doesn't match the scale that we see here. And so if we removed age, it would be 0.542, which is exactly what we had a few seconds ago. So let's go ahead and remove age. Let's pull it out there. There we go. The good news is, is we can't put gender in there because gender was listed as a text variable. So we can't put gender in there. And by the way, you know, these, these things are listed as nominal variables with the Venn diagram artwork. And over here, it's like, I only want ordinal or continuous variables. It sort of ignores that. But you could go through and change these by double clicking on here and choosing continuous because they technically are continuous. As we are analyzing them right now, they are continuous variables. And when we get decimal values, that's what we do. Now, if we, uh, we can also get item statistics for mean standard deviation and the correlation with the rest of the scale. So if we did a correlation between the single item, let's say A1 for here, right? 0.08 Pearson's R, that is a one single correlation with the rest of the items, okay? With the rest of the items. So we can um, go ahead and see if there is a bad, a single bad, but of course we wanna make sure we do the rever reversing too. So we would use this after to see if there was like, an item that wasn't really making sense with the rest of the items before we do anything with factor analysis or anything like that. And we can also grab a correlation heat map. This is a plot telling us it's very unreadable when you have a lot of items. So I do not recommend it for looking at numbers, but rather looking at um, looking at colors. OK, and it gives you the uh, beneath the uh, diagonal here. But the main thing we want to do, main thing we want to do is reverse this. So we're going to reverse scale some items and it tells us which ones we need to reverse scale. We need to put a one in there. We need to put C4, and we can do this all. Um, we can do this all at once or one at a time. C5 needs to get reversed, and every time I do this, you can see that the values are changing, going slow enough to where you can see. And as we keep doing this, our Cronbach's alpha is increasing. So we went from 0.599 to 0.67. That's pretty good. Now we need to do the entire n scale. So I'm going to grab n, and I'm going to click on Shift to show you. And when you click on Shift, it it selects everything. So I selected n1, or I clicked on n1. I held shift and I clicked on N5, it grabs everything in the between. So we're gonna move those all over. Now we went from 0.67 to 0.79 with all five of those transfers. Then we need 01 or 02, 04, and 05. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna click on 02, I'm gonna hold, sorry, I'm gonna hold command and I'm gonna grab 04 and 05. So command allows you to select individual items, shift allows you to select a list. Now I'm gonna reverse scale those. Okay. 
So now we have a Cronbach's alpha of 0.825, which, according to Cronbach himself, is a good convention for a reliable, internally reliable scale. And you can see that in the mean now, people are agreeing with the characterization on this at 4.2 with a much larger uh, standard deviation. So significantly wider variance here. Okay. And now you can see that our item rest correlation makes a lot more sense. We have 0.3s, 0.4s, uh, almost 0.5s. These are, here we go, 0.51 for E2. Now, the note A is telling us which items are reverse coded. And you can see that if we were to remove some of these, we might get a slightly better Cronbach's alpha, but not really. Like there's no out, there's no wild out, outlier here. We can, we can clearly see that this is a, um, a, uh, you know, and if we come over here to the heat map, we can see that there are much more positive relationships with all of these uh, values, and some of them are fairly strong. So this is a good way to test. Now, uh, does this reverse scale the items in your data set? No, it's only reverse scaling them inside this module. And unfortunately, you cannot save the reverse items. You actually have to go through the uh, way to transform. Now I have a video on how to transform scale items uh, using the transform function in Jamovi. Check out that video. Um, but you can only save on this one the mean score or the sum. You cannot save the reverse scaled item. So as soon as you leave this module, there's no change to this data set, as you can see here. There's no change to it. So unfortunately, that's a limitation here. You're going to have to go through it. Now, if you had done the reverse, reverse process prior to this, you wouldn't have to use the reverse scaled items because everything you put over into this would be the correct direction for the items okay so you have an uh for example an a1 reversed a c4 a c5 reversed an e1 e2 reversed all of the ends would be reversed and then your o2 o4 and o5 and so you wouldn't have to go through this process to do that okay so this is the reliability analysis in jamovi if you have any comments suggestions or feedback please leave that in the comments down below thanks for watching see ya